Hi everybody, this is Steve Halley here with the Family Peace Initiative. Welcome to the September issue of the Facilitator's Tool Chest blog. Um, today I want to talk with you about the need to help those who batter to feel safe. Uh, it's a little bit of an oxymoron as it seems kind of odd to help those who use cruelty in relationships to feel safe. But it uh, turns out that that's exactly what we need to do in battery intervention classes in order to be successful or increase the odds of success when we're working with those who batter. Uh, it turns out there's some great research behind that that kind of validates the reasons why we need to pursue safety with those who batter. Uh, you don't have to look much farther than uh, Stephen Porges and his work with polyvagal theory. Uh, polyvagal theory really talks about the neurosystems that we have in our body that are designed to protect us, that uh, can get activated before our prefrontal cortex is even aware of the danger. And he talks about three systems that are important for us as human beings to employ in order to protect ourselves, to survive. The oldest is what he calls the dorsal vagal system, which is really the, which is part of our neurobiology system that is involved in shutting down. Uh, it is the immobilization system of dissociation of, uh, you know, of freezing. Uh, have you ever been so scared that you just froze? I can remember several times rock climbing in Wyoming when suddenly I'm on the side of a cliff and I got afraid and I froze. I couldn't move. Um, it took me a while to navigate that to get my body back into function again, but my Dorsal vagal system said, you're in danger and we're freezing. We're going to protect ourselves. And that's exactly what happened. The next up vagal system that Porges talks about is the sympathetic nervous system, which is really uh, involved in fighting and flighting, fighting and running. The mobilization system, we're going to protect ourselves by mobilizing. Um, and that can show up in a lot of ways. It can show up in fighting and swinging and punching and panicking and just being activated that way. Or it can show up in arguing. It can show up in passive aggressive behavior. It can show up in a lot of different ways or running away, you know, uh, which can be literally running or it can be strategizing on how to be unseen, how to hide, how to isolate. Stephen Porges talks about the third system is the most recent that uh, really is unique to mammals, and that is the social engagement system. Uh, the ventral vagal system is what he calls that. And the social engagement system talks about how we use our ears to listen to people's tones of voices, how we use our eyes in order to see people's faces and see the expressions on their faces and looking and hearing for sounds of safety. And we do that in a social engagement system where we're engaged pursuing a co-regulation between at least two human beings where they're on the same emotional energy and there's a feeling of safety in the mix. Well, that's a key concept for battery intervention. Because, you know, in the almost 30 years that I've been doing this work, I've seen lots of people come to our programs afraid. They're afraid of being seen as monsters and demons. They're afraid of being humiliated and ostracized. They're afraid of groups. They're afraid of having to be vulnerable, having to talk about themselves. They're, they're just afraid. And when people are afraid, they go into protection. And so as a facilitator, my job is trying to figure out how to help them to be safe and recognize, have their body recognize that they're safe in a room full of those who batter. And that's no small task. And so in the end, when people complete the program, what they say is, Oh, it helped me to listen to the stories of others. I saw my story in their story. 
that's important that's talking about safety all right i recognize that i'm not crazy that i recognize that i'm okay and i just have things that i need to change all right that's safety and you can see it in the way people change their engagement in the groups from week one to maybe week 12 or 14 when suddenly they start engaging in conversation and talking about challenging issues and sharing their opinion and talking about their story in ways that they would have never done you know six or eight weeks prior the social engagement system when people feel a level of safety they're willing to have conversations and examine things and listen to difficult topics without the feeling of threat, without the feeling of danger, without the need to protect. And when we create a space in our rooms where people don't have to protect themselves, where there's a safety and they perceive it and they pick it up in our language, in our faces, in the language and faces of those in the room, remarkable things can happen. But the other side of that, if group members have to protect themselves, if they're afraid, if they are busy just being on guard against dangers, and we've all been if, in these groups too, where nothing's getting done and it feels like we're just herding cats and you know people are just busy protecting themselves. And it's hard to get any kind of good work done when people are in danger. Thanks so much for listening to this. Uh, there's so much more about that. There's all kinds of wonderful books uh, about uh, polyvagal theory and about at using that theory and working with trauma. Uh, but you can probably notice it in yourself, how you protect yourself when you're not safe. And what do you do when you feel safe? How you relax, how you enjoy people's company and you can listen to their stories and you can share parts of your own story. It's different. As we create safety in the world, the room changes and we change. If we don't have to focus on protecting, we can become co-regulating with others around us. See you in October and um, have a great fall. Thanks.